another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King coming to you from the locker room once again. We're going to talk some Islanders basketball with head coaches Willis Wilson of the men's program and Royce Chadwick of the Islanders women's program. We also have a feature coming up on Islanders tennis. Start things off, though, talking men's hoops with the head coach, Willis Wilson. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Your squad on the road this past week picked up the split. And uh, normally that's not bad, but I know you're a little disappointed about that with the, the loss at Sam Houston State, a close loss that it was. But, you know, you were fighting for second position in that game against Sam Houston State, but by the end of the week, it's weird how things can change because they actually have you now slotted in in the fourth position. Do you focus in on the conference standings at this point, or really is your attention to just the next game? Well, I think the most important thing is to focus in on the teams that the, the things that matter to our team and to our players. Uh, we're not a mature team yet, and that, that's something that I've talked about all year long. And so I think the, the important thing for us is to focus on us, focus on the things that we do, focus on our process. And uh, if we'll do that, it'll yield the, the results that we're looking for. We've, we've played good basketball uh, all of the month of, uh, of January. It's good to start the month of February with a win, and so we, we feel pretty good about the direction of things, certainly not satisfied. Uh, but there are some things that I think we can work on and uh, to improve over the course of the, the month of February to get ready for, for March. Well, the team didn't play poorly over the weekend stretch, and not at Sam Houston State. You led at the half, as a matter of fact, but kind of fell victim to a 12-0 run, which ultimately led to about a 16-point lead for the Bearcats. You scratched and clawed and got your way back in to within two points, but it just wasn't enough. Did we just need one more minute in that game? Uh, one more minute would have would have really helped. Yeah. Would have, would have made a difference. And I think with with more time on the clock, that's a game that we easily could have pulled out. Uh, but the fact is, we didn't have another minute, and uh, the stretch to start the uh, the second half really really hurt us. And it's something that we need to be a little bit concerned about because the the stretch to start the second half against Lamar, uh, we had a similar result. And so that's something that we've got to pay attention to and talk about and see if we can't. Uh, fix that, and the truth is, that's an area of concern earlier in the year that we felt like we we rectified. But at the end of the day, when you're playing uh, for a for a conference race and to stay in the hunt, uh, you can't have letdowns. In every game, there's going to be lulls and and in uh, high points. But when it's all said and done, you've got to minimize those. And that stretch in that second half uh, to begin that period against Sam Houston just really, really put us behind the eight ball. Basketball games have always been defined by runs, you know, and it's usually the winner is the team who had the last run of the game. And that's always kind of the challenge, especially if you dig too deep a hole. Well, and, and I think in the case of Sam Houston, they were trying to hang on, and we were the team that was making that run, and, and we just ran out of clock. Uh, we had one play in particular that uh, you look back, Jake Cohort made a tremendous steal right under the basket uh, with the ball, and, and to the Sam Houston uh, team's credit, they made a – defensive play to keep us from getting a basket on that play that would have really, I think, put the pressure on them. Now against Lamar, instead of feeling sorry for themselves and having a hangover after the Sam Houston game and being disappointed, they seem to do a great job of putting that behind them and just moving forward, looking forward, and played a, a very solid game, very focused. Um, has a, this team had that type of short memory throughout the season, being able to put e losses or even wins behind them just to move forward? Well, I think what we have is a good hindsight perspective. We can look back and see uh, how things have affected us, how we've done things well and overcome obstacles and, and so forth. I think the big challenge for us is not so much getting up and getting ready for that next game, but being hungry enough to really want to reach to improve every day in practice. And it's a, it's a whole different sort of, uh, sort of feel for me as a coach and I think from our, from our coaching staff. Uh, we're looking for our guys to really get excited this month and to really want to put the time into practice. We've had good practices, but there are two or three things that I think are significant this time of year. You've got to be able to have a short memory, put things behind you. You've got to be able to come out and get your work in every day so that you feel like you've earned victory. And then you have to improve in some small areas, free throw shooting, uh, defensive field goal percentage, rebound margin, things of that nature. And if you can get better in those areas, uh, I think that that's what that allows you to, to be in position to do great things at the end of the season. Even though in the first half against Lamar, we didn't take care of the basketball exceptionally well, we had nine turnovers, you still held the Cardinals to 11 first-half points 
Now, in the end, they posted only 35 points, and that's the lowest total for any opponent in Islanders history. Um, you have to be proud of that. Well, I think I think they had a lot to do with that, and I think we had a lot to do with it. In every basketball game, there are going to be situations where teams miss shots, but the fact is we've paid a lot of attention to defense, and we really have worked to get better. Uh, the truth is uh, our, our field goal percentage differential is pretty solid. It's good enough uh, for us to, to have success night in and night out. We're shooting the ball well. On the defensive side, uh, I think we can get better. I, I really feel like we can get better. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen or, or certainly be reflected in our defensive field goal percentage, but that differential is the, is the key right now. and We've got to maintain that. Against Lamar also, I would have to say that your post play was pretty solid. Jeff Beverly is seeming to find his offensive touch over the week, actually, in both games. And Zane Knowles was very effective, especially against Lamar on the glass and blocking shots and just being a presence in the paint. Not to mention Rashawn Thomas, also very active, 10.7 boards, a couple blocks himself. Those guys have, have played well. And we've, we've tried to make some subtle adjustments with those guys in the post area to play more to their strengths and to stay away from the things that they don't do well. I thought Jeff Beverly did a great job of, of making that adjustment in, in both games. Um, the turnovers, a lot of those turnovers that you touched on, especially in that Lamar game, are coming from the post guys. And uh, some of that is a reflection of they're anxious. They've been in situations where they can have a lot of success. And uh, and I just think there are probably two or three plays in both games for each of those guys where they've had opportunities to convert baskets and just get a little bit ahead of themselves and start looking at outcomes more than they, they value a process of just catching the ball, getting on balance and finishing. And so that, again, is an area where we have a chance to, to make some progress and improve. We need our post guys to be successful for our program to succeed long term. Well, Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian are up next. You go continue on the road as we'll head to San Antonio, and then, of course, Abilene. Now, Abilene Christian has had their struggles in their transition to Division One, but you can't really say that about Incarnate Word, per se. Um, they are a force in the league, and as we've seen up close and personal, they're talented, uh, they're, plain and simple. They're very, very talented. They're a very good basketball team. Uh, I think Ken Burmeister's approach to uh, this season was a very wise one for his club. He he had the, the freedom to play a lot of non-Division One teams, where they were able to collect a lot of wins and gain a lot of confidence. And that's what you need when you're making a jump from Division Two into Division One. You have to be able to play with confidence and poise and believe that you can can win basketball games. And that's exactly what they did. They do bring some experience to the table. And uh, they've got one, one terrific scorer uh, in Denzel Livingston. Uh, and so we're going to have our hands full when we go on the road to San Antonio. Uh, there is no doubt. And uh, again, just for those who've not paying attention again. Incarnate Word just lost to Stephen F. Austin by two in Nacogdoches, and they also had a two-point loss uh, to Oral Roberts. You know, wins over Sam Houston. It's going to be a challenging week. There's no doubt. It, it will be, but we're looking forward to the challenge. And again, we're back on the road, so uh, hopefully things will continue to follow the trend that we set so far. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you, Willis Wilson, joining us here in the locker room. When we come back, we got a special feature on. Islanders Tennis. That's coming your way right here on Islanders Insider. For the remainder of the 2013-2014 season, Islanders Basketball is offering a new friends and family four-pack promotion for Saturday games on Stride's Court at the American Bank Center. For just $44, fans get four sodas, four hot dogs, and four tickets to an Islanders men's and women's basketball doubleheader. This is the perfect opportunity to show your support for your hometown team in their pursuit of conference titles. That's four tickets to an Islanders basketball doubleheader, four hot dogs, and four sodas for only $44. Visit GoIslanders.com or call 825-BALL to purchase your friends and family four-pack today. That's 825-BALL. Go Islanders! Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we want to share with you a feature from Teddy Medina telling you about Islanders tennis and the start to their new season. The Islanders tennis season is officially underway. The men started off their season on the road playing in New Mexico. They were more than pleased with their results. Yeah, well, I, I'm very proud of the team because indoors and in playing Attitude New Mexico is not our surface, but everybody played their best, played every point with intensity, so I'm really proud uh, of the results so far. Well, we definitely had a good time in New Mexico. Usually it's, we have a rough time, but we were able to battle up there, and we really fought hard. All eight of the guys that went, we all battled, we all fought, and then that's, that's why we came out with the win. 
Well, I thought the guys did a great job going up into tough conditions indoors in altitude. Um, obviously, we're an outdoor team, and I thought that we really competed with incredible focus and grit. I thought that uh, they did a great job at the things they can control, making the modifications that they needed to make, and, and I thought they fought with great spirit, and uh, that road trip was good for us. The women were able to open their season at home. With the men also at home playing at the same time, they were able to treat the hometown crowd. It was a really good match. Um, we all did like good as a team. We came out as a team. Uh, we just went there and like play our best. Um, yeah, 127 people at our first match on Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, I think for the girls it meant the world. You know, it was their first match. It was their first experience and when you see those kind of people cheering for you and it, it, it certainly makes you compete for them with extra spirit. Well, it was really excited because it, it was the first time, the first match here and it was home. So it was really excited. We were all like really nervous too because we wanted to do it good in front of our people here. The teams have their sights set high this season, but are still trying to keep their focus on taking it one step at a time. The girls are on a mission. They they almost won the conference last year. They were second, and then second, the finals of the conference tournament. They want the NCAs badly. Um, as a coach, we just have to focus on the process, you know, almost hold them back. Let's not think as much about outcomes. Let's think about maxing out the things we can control, squeezing all the juice out of our orange every day, all the things that we can do, we, we have to max out. Why do I? We don't really talk about that. We don't want to put pressure in the team. We, I guess we just go step by step. It's match at the time. So if you're doing the right things, it's match. You're going to reach your goals. Yeah, with the guys, I feel like um, we're off to such a good start. I feel like the guys really believe that, um, that they can be 30, 35 in the nation like we were three or four years ago. Well, definitely the, um, the expectation is to win the conference and then I really want to do great in the NCAA, win one or two rounds at least, go deep in the NCAA. And, but I don't, I don't want to put too much pressure on the team. I want to play each match separate. So right now we're just focusing on the next match. For Honors Insider, I'm Teddy Medina. We'll be right back. It's the countdown to Katie. Southland Conference basketball teams are fighting for a chance to play in the Merrill Center. A league title and a bid to the big dance will be on the line. The action begins March 12th. Visit southland.org slash katie or ticketmaster.com and start your countdown to Katie. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. It's time to talk some Islanders women's basketball with the head coach of the women's program, Coach Royce Chadwick. How are you doing, Coach? I'm good, Stephen. Well, tough week this past week. Back on the road again. Um, games at Sam Houston State and Lamar. Unfortunately, neither came your way. And I'll tell you one thing. If you just watched a half of basketball, you think, okay, things are going well. But it was second halves in both contests that were really the demise. Well, against Sam, we had a one-point lead with about a minute to go. Uh, we got three freshmen on the floor, and they're trying to finish, and they just haven't learned to do that yet. So we were unable to get that one done. Um, in the Lamar game, I thought they're pressed in the second half. They have veteran guards, and they got after our, our young guards, and uh, we had a uh, multitude of turnovers. We turned it over in just about every way that you could. And I thought that uh, they were able to get – um, the mental edge on us in the second half, and I thought it really uh, it, it wore us out. And they did a really good job of attacking us, and we didn't respond. So hopefully, we already watched the tape this morning. Uh, we're getting ready to practice, and you know we'll go over it and see if we can correct that for the Incarnate Word game. Well, in the game against Sam Houston State, the first game of the week uh, in Huntsville, you know it was the first time that your team has lost when scoring 70 points and shooting over 40% from the field. But unfortunately, it was that second half, as I said, 29% shooting in the second half, slowed things down. Now, was it the defensive pressure? Was it impatience, just some slot, uh, shot selection? You know, what, what led to the numbers dropping? Well, I thought the, uh, in the first half, we defended 
and we got some things off of our defense. In the second half, I think that uh, we basically began to think, oh, we'll just outscore you. And we started rushing shots and taking them quicker, and we didn't set up our offense with our defense. We are not a, a talented enough team to just go out and blow people away because of our offensive prowess. We have to play both ends of the court. And, you know, you look at both those games, and we gave up way too many points to win games. So we have to work on the defensive end and basically talk to our people about how that sets up your offense. A little credit where credit is due. Angela Beadle for Sam Houston State, uh, although she didn't have a huge statistical game, kind of made a couple plays down at the very end. In particular, she had a lay-in to take back a one-point lead, which you guys had with just over a minute to go. And then she had two blocks in, in the final minute, including the block on Brady Huff with two seconds to go. Um, it had to be heartbreaking. Well, she made a huge difference in the game. Uh, she is their leading scorer. She's their leading rebounder. In the first half, our plan was take it at her. And we did because she has had a propensity to foul people. But you're talking about a third-year girl in a program where she gets it, she understands, and when the game was on the line, she made the place to win the game. Unfortunately for us, we're in a situation where we don't have a lot of those third-year players in our program. As a matter of fact, we have none. Um, we are a second-year program, and when this freshman class is uh, a little older and a little more mature, you're going to see them stepping up, making plays to win games. Right now, uh, you know, in the Lamar game, Van Chancellor, who has an Olympic gold medal, was doing the play-by-play, -play. and an uh, old friend of mine, I visited with him before the game, he said, Coach, you're starting three freshmen. I said, yes. He goes, that bodes well for your future, but you're going to lose a lot of close games, aren't you? And I said, absolutely. That's exactly what's happening. But they're growing, they're getting better, and when we are a third year, when those girls are in their third year, they'll be able to make those plays to win us games. And speaking of the freshmen in that Lamar game, one of those freshmen, Brittany Bomalu, she had six threes in the first half, no doubt. But unfortunately, she kind of cooled off the rest of the way. Got to give a little bit of credit, of course, uh, to Lamar. Picking up the scoring, though, in the second half was the hard part. We, she lost her shooting touch in the second half. Cassie Jones did what she could, pumping in 12, but we just couldn't find enough options in the second half. Well, we turned it over. You know, it, our, our flow and our continuity was gone because we were turning it over uh, with their press. We were turning over it in half court. Uh, we didn't set our offenses the way we set them in the first half, and that's our quarterback's job. Once we get the ball across half court, we have to make sure everybody is set before you run the play, and we didn't do that. We were rushing to, to get the ball out of our hands, and our composure was uh, questioned uh, uh, by their defense, and we didn't rise to the occasion. And, and hopefully as we get better, we're going to be able to get our quarterbacks on offense to set the offense, everybody take a breath, and let's execute. We did that in the first half, and if you get Brittany shots, she'll knock them down. We didn't get her any shots in the second half, so she couldn't couldn't score, and uh, we just we didn't respond to adversity the way we need to respond. Speaking of those turnovers in the second half, uh, just some bad decisions, or credit Lamar maybe for speeding you guys up. People talk about that, that all the time, speeding up a team to get to force them into making mistakes. And I thought Lamar did a really good job of uh, trying to make us make reads and. You know, let me let me go back. If you have a, a, a freshman, you have a rookie quarterback in the NFL, you play zone and make them make reads. If you have a veteran, you play more man-to-man -man and match up because you better be able to stop them because they can make those reads. Lamar does exactly that. They jumped on us. You shoot a shot and miss it against Lamar, they will double-team you to see if you can make the read to get the ball out. We, we, unfortunately, when we saw the pressure, we ducked our head and did not make the right read. So we have to get more experience. And, and that was a, a very hard pill to swallow for our youngsters that I, I see the girl open on tape, Coach. I don't know why I couldn't see her during the game, but I won't let that happen to me again. And that's the, the attitude we want them to go forward with. I know in, in the game against Lamar also there were some foul issues as well. I know there was a lot of offensive fouls being called. And... I know you, of course, have to get them to just to be ready to adjust to officiating, but at the same time, they have to keep their minds clear and not get frustrated and let that take them out of their game. Well, I think we are a team that is extremely volatile. We are um, prepared to, to change on a, a whim. If we get a big-time shot, boy, we are really energetic. If we shoot an air ball, it takes us 10 seconds to realize 
that, that counts the same as one that rimmed around four times and fell out. Uh, so we're uh, extremely fluctuating and I think that's inexperience. We just aren't a very experienced Division I team yet and they're going to get better as they go. But Lamar had a lot to do with that because of the fact that they are a veteran team. Well, it's on the road again. One more week before you get to come back to Corpus Christi. Uh, you're going to take on the two newcomers into the Southland Conference, Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian. Now, they both have transitioned well into Division One play and are quite competitive, especially ACU. Uh, they've already got wins over Sam Houston and Oral Roberts along the way. Uh, what is your take on this week? What did you think it was going to be maybe a few weeks ago? But now that we're up against it, you know, now that you know more about them, what do you think? Well, I think they're both great programs. They've got good coaches. They are uh, in situations where they're building for the future. Uh, both teams have some young players. When you look at uh, the, the win column, we're right there with both of them. I think we have one over uh, uh, Incarnate Word, and we have the same number of wins as Abilene Christian. So th this is a regular Southland Conference game for us. If we go in and we play the way we're capable of and we make the plays down the stretch, we'll win the game in San Antonio. We'll do the same thing in Abilene. If we make the plays, we'll win the game in Abilene. If we don't, we could lose the game. So there's just not a big margin for error for Incarnate Word or us. Whoever plays the best that night will win that game. And that's the Southland for the rest of the way. I don't care who it is, where they're playing. If we play, we have opportunities to win. If we have bad nights, we're not going to win those games. So it's a 50-50 proposition every time we hit the floor. Well, it's going to be a big week on the road this week, Coach, and uh, can wish you best of luck. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Coach Royce Chadwick joining us here once again on Islanders Insider. When we come back, we'll bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. You're watching Islanders Insider. What's Massage Envy Spa? For me, it's healthy, it's affordable. <sighs> I mean, he always wants... Pain relief. Right. And I want a healthier complexion. And now we can get a customized massage or a healthy skin facial... At a really good price. At a great price. <laughs> and nothing feels better than that. Customized massages and healthy skin facials, all at the perfect price. Start a healthy routine today with Massage Envy Spa. Go, you'll see. Welcome back once again to Islanders Insider. At this time, let's bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Southland Conference action continues for Islanders basketball teams as they continue on the road. Thursday, February 6th at the University of Incarnate Word with the first game starting at 5.30. And then on Saturday, February 8th at Abilene Christian with game one of the doubleheader at 1 o'clock. Then they'll head back to the American Bank Center here in Corpus Christi on Thursday, February 13th as they host Central Arkansas. It's a 5 o'clock start and Game 1 is the Think Pink Game sponsored by Christus Spahn. Also on Saturday, February 15th, Oral Roberts will return to Corpus Christi with Game 1 of that doubleheader at 1 o'clock. Softball season starts up at the CenturyLink Classic beginning on Friday, February 7th with the Islanders facing Texas State, Stephen F. Austin, Ball State, and Southern Illinois in tournament play. Stephanie Uses squad will play six games in the three-day event. Women's tennis will start a very busy stretch on Thursday, February 6th. They travel to UTSA for a 2 o'clock start time. Then on Monday, February 11th, they'll come back to the Henry Tennis Center to face UT Penn American, free admission for that 3 o'clock match. Wednesday, February 12th, they'll travel to SMU for a 2 o'clock start. And on Thursday, February 13th, they'll wrap up the four-game stretch at UT Arlington at 2 o'clock. Once again, we want to thank Royce Chadwick and Willis Wilson, head coaches of women's and men's basketball, for joining us here today. I want to thank Teddy Medina and his feature on Islanders Tennis. And, of course, thank you for tuning in. I'm Stephen King. You've been watching Islanders Tennis.